this video we're going to look at uh, trenched installation. Uh, as I might have mentioned there are two different types of installation. There's um, using trenches which is the traditional way of doing things and there's trenchless where you don't dig a trench you um, drill it into the ground. So in this one we're looking at the traditional way of doing things which is trenched installation. Basically the process starts with a ground surface and you're going to put a trench through here. You start off by digging a trench and installing the bedding. Um, once you've installed the bedding you uh, put the pipe there uh, and on pipe, top of the pipe you normally put detector tape to um, enable, especially for plastic pipe, to enable the pipe to be detected uh, from above the ground um, by magnetic uh, detection equipment. Uh, the next thing you do is you um, fill in the embedment. So once you've laid the pipe you've got to put um, either more bedding material or uh, excavated material around the pipe and it's important that it be compacted properly uh, so that the pipe um, can actually take uh, let, um, vertical pressures. If it doesn't then it, especially with plastic pipes, they can end up being egg shaped, they can start crushing. So the embedment actually um, contains the pipe uh, on the sides and stops it and helps it to maintain its round shape. Uh, and then finally you um, install the backfill uh, which is usually the in situ material. So let's look at each one of those processes um, in a little bit more detail. Firstly trenching. Um, trenching is usually done with an excavator. Uh, back actors are especially good for this. They are the, the, the movement there where it um, digs towards the operator makes it very um, useful for digging. Uh, you can see this worm's eye view of the whole thing, uh, what it looks like. So the excavator reaches out, grabs it and pulls it in. You can see that the pipe, the, the bucket being used by the excavator in both these top shots is, is thinner than a normal bucket. It's a trenching bucket, especially for trenches. So you don't want to over excavate the trench um, for two reasons. First of all, you are digging extra material you don't need to dig, but also um, it, um, the, the, the thinner the bucket is, the more uh, the less power it takes to sort of dig it all out. If it was a wide bucket it would need a little bit more power to sort of dig out um, hard soils. Uh, the other thing I was showing here, I mean it shows the pipe being installed, but you can see the survey equipment there. So you need to be, when you're doing the trenching, you need to be uh, making sure that you're trenching down to the correct depth, allowing for back um, bedding um, to, to bring it up to the right level. You're also making sure you get the right alignment as well. Uh, another thing you need to take care of is that the, the base of the trench is flat without any anything sticking out, without any humps or hollows, because that can um, uh, cause water to pond or it could cause uh, obstructions to um, uh, penetrate the pipe. So what you don't you want a nice smooth flat uh, trench floor as well. Uh, now excavators are the way that's most usually done, but in the bottom left hand corner here you can see they're using a, a, trench, a, a trencher, which is really just like a big chainsaw, but um, it sort of um, removes the soil using this chain here, chain I think it's called a chain digger, and then the soil is sort of side cast using that little screw conveyor thing, thing there as well. Another issue you have in trenching is dewatering. If you get flooding in the trench, then you're not going to be able to compact your aggregate down very well. The ground's going to get soft and it's not going to work very well. So you do need to keep the trench dry when you're um, laying it. Also, pipes such as plastic pipe and uh, polyethylene pipe will float. So it's very hard to get them down to the right level when they're floating on some water. So you need to remove the, the, the water. One way of doing that is to have a sump at the end of the trench, at the low end of the trench, and put a pump at the top there. So you can see they've got a sump there, and they're pumping it out. So there's a sump pump there. Uh, in this case here, the um, the pump is at the top there, and it turns a little impeller down the, down there. You can also have um, sump pumps that have the motor and the uh, pump uh, under underwater as well, and they are able to pump a higher um, distant, a higher height. Dewatering is the other way that these things can be done. So you can see they're laying a pipe there. 
uh, so you've got this well pointing system here uh, those wands go down to well below the uh, water surface to the groundwater surface uh, and there's a pump connected to this main pipe here uh, when the pump pumps it's pulling water out of each one of these wands and it lowers the water table down to a level below that of the trench so well pointings an especially effective way of doing it but it's a bit more expensive than just a sump pump uh, you also need to once you start um, laying the trench you need to make sure that it's in the right level so when you're laying the bedding and the pipe itself you use a laser nowadays they used to use what's called boning rods but nowadays it's a laser which is shined from the um, shone from the uh, the manhole uh, up at the right grade and so when someone's sort of setting it all out all they have to do is make sure that the uh, laser is at the right height so they set the bedding up and there'll be a distance between that and the bedding and as they go through they just make sure that the bedding is laid to the right level uh, also when you get people down in a trench you need to um, below 1.5 meters you need to ensure that they're safe if the trench collapses in on someone they can suffocate uh, or be crushed and so a trenching shield uh, prevents that from happening so you can see some people here trenching in some very unstable ground uh, the shield uh, provides a protection for those guys that are in the hole so there you can see a shield there as well and what it is is two steel plates with um, a brace between them uh, the whole thing is set up on the ground and then lowered into the trench as one unit the bedding um, as I mentioned it's important that the bedding be at the right level and you'd use a laser there so you'd be shining a laser down there and the guys would be going through with rakes and um, uh, making sure that they are laying the, the bedding at the right level uh, it must be at the correct level uh, it supports the pipe as well sometimes you will shape it to the shape of the pipe um, sometimes you just have it flat and then you'll just compact in underneath whatever happens you need to be able to compact in underneath that bottom half of the pipe to make sure that's supported as well you can't just have the pipe being supported on one um, small point there because that's going to um, lead to uh, a localized pressure point which could cause um, pipe damage. Uh, bedding material normally um, you can have uh, AP6 which is sort of um, fire, uh, small gravel uh, or it can be sand. Uh, you don't want anything bigger because um, the big particles of aggregate can actually um, sit uh, can cause localized pressure spots on the pipe so you want to keep it down to this smallish type um, sand um, small um, sand and small gravel uh, type bedding when you're laying it um, you start at the low end if you've got a um, rubber ring joints uh, you have the sockets pointing upstream uh, you have a flexible joint at the manhole so that if the pipe does the, the manhole in the pipe there will be some differential sediment so there needs to be an allowance there for maybe five 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 to ten mils worth of, of differential sediment uh, once again the pipe laser is used to make sure that the pipe is being laid at the right grade and that it is a constant grade as well the embedment uh, once you've sort of laid the pipe itself then you need to compact in around the sides as I mentioned it is important that the sides be properly compacted uh, because especially with plastic pipe without that side support to the plastic pipe can sort of end up crushing down to an egg shape which is not very good and causes it to lose um, uh, water tightness as well uh, so it's important that it be compacted to the sides and underneath as well uh, the embedment also extends over the top of the pipe to a point where you can actually use heavier compaction equipment so normally you use a jumping jack or a plate compactor some sort of small mechanical uh, small compaction device uh, because if you used a big compaction device like a roller or something on top of this um, it could crack the pipe so you've got to make sure that when you're um, laying the embedment in the backfill that you're not putting um, too much compaction in uh, so as to damage the pipe but you've got to put enough in to compact it properly if you don't compact it properly then the whole thing's going to settle over time which is not very good uh, once you've um, usually before you cover the pipe you will do testing 
uh, air testing of the pipe you'll fill it up with water and you'll probably walk along the line and just see if there's any leakage coming out of it um, uh, so there's different types the air pressure test um, is you uh, plug both ends you pump it full of air and then you monitor whether the air pressure actually drops in the pipe or whether it's holding it uh, similar test is the water test we fill it out with water apply pressure once again you're looking for a drop in water pressure you're also walking along the line and looking for uh, wet spots where the, the water is leaking out of the pipe once you ha are sure that the pipe is actually watertight and that it can hold the pressure it's supposed to uh, you'll do the final backfilling and you can see that uh, it's basically a matter of uh, the, usually you use the excavated material so when you're excavating you usually have the, the material sort of pulled up along the side and you're just basically pulling it down with an excavator you're lifting it up in layers of 20 to 300 sorry 200 to 300 millimeters um, to make sure that you're getting the compaction it needs to be properly compacted over the pipe but once again enough compaction to compact the soil but not too much so that you crack the pipe so once again it's often done with um, hand uh, light hand equipment such as jumping jacks or um, or plate compactors.